ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चेग नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय नीर नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवय भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी ओम अज्ञानतिरांद से ज्ञाजन शलाकय चक्षुन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सारि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण ऑडिबल ओके थैंक यू उपगते क्वचि प्रकृति मुफे युषी यदव प्रवाह भीष्मी नौ इनवेस्ट मै थिंकिंग फीलिंग एंड विलिंग विच वर्ड सो लांग एंगेज इन डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट एंड ऑक्युपेशनल ड्यूटी in the all powerful lord shri krishna he is always self satisfied but sometimes being the leader of the devotees uh, the leader of the devotees tatvata pungave uh, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world although from him only the material world is created so we discussed this last week uh, but as a continuation of these verses i just thought we would study this again Uh, so thinking feeling and willing are the activities of the mind the mind so far for bishma dev was engaged in different subjects and occupational duties uh <clears throat> so our mind is also engaged in different subjects and occupational duties uh, but at some point of time we have to also invest our whole thinking feeling and willing in the all powerful lord shri krishna <clears throat> <clears throat> so there is a reason this whole varnashrama mindset has to be followed um that we don't become too attached we don't become too attached to material things duties etc we do as a matter of duty uh, but we don't get too attached because if we do if we get too attached there will be two problems one is our mind is constantly uh drowned in those thoughts uh, drowned because we can't pull it out also um and second our desire to engage in material activities will continue to exist so which means that we will keep on going no vana prastha no cutting off from grastha no time in today's disappearance day of ila bhakti vinod thakur mm, so bhakti vinod thakur ji ki jai so he said that for grastas 8 uh, hours bhakti and for vanaprastha 16 hours bhakti so we have to first of all we have come to 8 hours bhakti in in grastha ashram and then we have to transition to 16 hours only then actually the mind can be engaged in krishna uh, if we do 8 hours now mind can be engaged in krishna if we do 1 or 2 hours then it's not possible it's very difficult so <clears throat> that is the reason why as many as much devotional activities as possible we should engage in and so he was such a powerful yogi and devotee that he could suddenly switch right he had all these subjects occupation and duties etc etc he was on the battlefield but he was so powerful that he could just simply switch his thinking we might not be as powerful as bishma dev right so we might not have that much power if we just decided okay one day i'm going to just switch so gradually we have to keep increasing so two hours bhakti make it three hours three hours make it three and a half hours three and a half hours make it four hours and of course occupational duties have to be carried out we should not become irresponsible devotees the devotees also have a responsibility towards their family what is the responsibility towards family to make the family krishna conscious and not by aggression not by rebellion not by fighting spirit but by humility surrender 
service attitude, prayers, prayerful mood. We can, you know, make others, we can also bring others in the house to bhakti. And that's our, actually one of the primary preaching activities. Apart from our sadhana, our first preaching is in the house. Hmm. So we should be engaged in that way, in the house, and that will keep us fully Krishna conscious. Because every time we are just trying to figure out, okay, how can I, uh, you know, pull this person to bhakti? How can I pull that person to bhakti? And so on. And that's important. And talking about Krishna, Bhishma Dev is saying, he is always self-satisfied. Well, he is not always self-satisfied. Krishna is self-satisfied when we think about him in Vaikuntha. Maybe not, you know, so much in Vaikuntha. Yeah, Vaikuntha and... Definitely when he manifests his various pastimes in the material world, he is self-satisfied. Meaning he doesn't depend on anybody for his pleasure that way. But in Goloka, he's a very different person. Uh, so in Goloka, Krishna is not self-satisfied. Uh, Krishna is not self-controlled. Mm, Krishna is none of these in Goloka. That is why understanding Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan is very, very difficult. Uh, <clears throat> so he tells, Dukkha Dukkha Samay Kritva Labha Labha Ujaya Jaya We poised in happiness and distress and Krishna feels distress in Vrindavan. So yeah. But sometimes being the leader of devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world. So he doesn't come for any uh, paritrana sadhana, vinasha, dushkrutam, not for dushkrutis. He comes to show the sweetness of his Vrindavan pastimes to his devotees. And he enjoys transcendental pleasure. Like I said, even so-called unhappiness on the spiritual platform is transcendental pleasure. So he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world. Uh, although this world is created by him only, but he descends here just like a king who comes to the prison house uh, to kind of persuade the inmates, the prisoners there to rectify themselves and come out into the rest of the city apart outside the prison house. So Krishna also comes and he... Krishna's attraction, if you get attracted to Krishna, Krishna is all attractive, Sarvakarsaka. Krishna, the name itself means all attractive. So if you get attracted to Krishna, then we can very easily get out of this material world. But we have to let ourselves be attracted to Krishna. Let ourselves be attracted to Krishna means let ourselves, let us do, engage in services that we feel like doing, we want to do. Right? Don't let material circumstances pull us back. For example, we might have a poor health, we might have some financial situation, we might have some issues with other relations, etc., etc. But we should actually, in, in fact, I mean, when we are in more distress, we should engage more in Krishna service. Mm. We should, then obviously the mind will engage in Krishna and uh, just mind engaging in Krishna means we'll come out of all these useless uh, material miseries. Right? We are useless because they are actually not real at all. Because we are only not real. In the sense, we are here temporarily. So all these miseries are also temporary, but we don't think about it that way. We get so engrossed. So as soon as we come to Krishna, engage in some Krishna conscious activity, suddenly all this philosophy that we keep hearing comes to us. Oh, I am not this body. All the suffering is only to the body, not to me. I am spirit soul. So then it's very easy for us to disconnect. But that is the reason why Shravanam is emphasized. You know, Shravanam means hearing, chanting, reading. And these things should be fixed in our hearts, these qualities. But most important thing is being attracted to Krishna. And that is very, very important. <coughs> And yeah, Prabhupada is saying to achieve pure devotional service, 
thinking, feeling, and willing must be invested in Krishna. Otherwise, it will be mixed devotional service because thinking, feeling, and willing will be in, engaged in material things. Unless one is purified from all sorts of material desires, the Lord does not become one leader. So we have to, and bhakti is so powerful, we don't have to do anything else. Just by taking up activities of bhakti, one can become purified. And when one becomes purified, one surrenders fully to Krishna, then the Lord becomes one's leader. Very simple process. But the ordinary man who wants to lord it over material nature, Lord only sanctions and becomes a witness of activities. But he never gives the non-devotees instructions for going back to God. So he will give them in intelligence for them to accomplish whatever they want to in the material world. But he will not give them instructions for going back to Godhead. That is only for devotees. Non-devotees, uh, Lord, a super soul is present, Anumanta Upadrishta, but he doesn't give them any intelligence apart from what they want. For devotees, he will give instructions. Do this. Uh, so many times, you know, we get pushed to associate with certain devotees, get engaged in certain types of bhakti activities, etc., etc., right? And all that is actually Paramatma giving us mercy. <clears throat> so please remember this, this thinking, feeling, willing. Whenever our thinking, feeling, willing is stuck in material things, material problems, material situations, happiness, distress, etc. We should remember, oh, my thinking, feeling, willing is stuck here in this material consciousness. And we have to try and divert that consciousness to Krishna. And that is the reason associ being in the association of, uh, you know, like-minded devotees who are wanting to make progress will help us to make progress as well. Uh, if we are in the association of devotees who want to do Mishra Bhakti, we will also do Mishra Bhakti because we will feel so out of place there that, uh, you know, it will be very difficult for us to perform activities of Shuddha Bhakti in the association of devotees who don't want Shuddha Bhakti. So we should always associate with like-minded. Like-minded means it's not like this is, of course, pure devotion is best. But if you are not ready for pure devotion, maybe it's mixed devotion. And then we will associate with those devotees who are on the mixed devotional platform, which means they are doing bhakti, but they also have material desires. And pure devotees means they have not yet reached that stage, but they don't want anything else apart from Krishna. Their only goal is to please Krishna. <clears throat> okay. 33. Vibhuvana kamanam tamala tamala varnam ravikara gauravaram varam dadane apurra laka kulavrta nabjam vijaya sakhe ratir astume navadhya. Sri Krishna is the intimate friend of Arjuna. He has appeared on this earth in his transcendental body, which resembles the bluish color of the tamala tree. His body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems, upper, middle, and lower. May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face, covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp, be the object of my attraction. And may I not desire fruitive, act, fruitive results. Anavadya. Hmm. So the word here is ratiastu. Rati Astu means may I be, my attraction be reposed upon him. May, be, may I be attracted by him. Hmm? Let him be the object of my attraction. Uh, we have so many objects of attraction. Hmm? And Bhishmadev is giving very solid instructions. Krishna should be the object of our attraction. And so nicely, see, Actually, when we hear the prayers of various uh, people, devotees in Bhagavatam, we can understand their mood. If you are hearing prayers of demigods, normally it will be about protection, about their duties in the material world, administrative duties, and they'll be praying, Vishnu, please help us, please help us. But devotees, directly, they don't get 
stuck with all this protection business and this and that directly they'll go oh krishna's beautiful form krishna's beautiful activities krishna's beautiful pastimes so directly he's saying first he's uh, uh, you know glorifying krishna in association with arjuna because krishna always likes vijay sake always likes to be associated with his devotees eh? yashoda anandana nandanandana so he likes that so he has appeared on this on this earth in his transcendental body krishna's body is transcendental now we can't really understand this because we are so stuck with this material body krishna's body is transcendental uh, which means that it doesn't take birth it doesn't grow it doesn't dwindle it doesn't become destroyed but still when krishna appears then there is balya Oganda, Komara, Kishora. Now he goes through all various ages. But that's not growth like our body. It's just Krishna's pastimes that he takes on different, uh, you know, so-called years of this or ages of this material world and demonstrates various and performs various pastimes to attract different of his devotees there are different devotees who are, who are attached to his you know like bal gopal bal efal and others who might be attracted with his oganda others who are attracted is kaumara and um, for gaudiya vaishnavas we are attracted or we are supposed to be attracted not supposed to but yeah majorly to kishora kishora kishori hmm. eternally that 13 14 15 years age so his body is transcendental actually description of krishna's body is given it's inconceivable it's inconceivable you know we cannot it's very difficult to understand uh, so it is said that uh, krishna's body is as soft as butter <laughs> how can we understand that krishna's body is as soft as butter and then it is said his waist is as like you can uh, i mean like you can hold it in your in the grip of your hands as in so small waist and broad chest now suddenly you know some crazy uh, cartoon character will come to our head right so it's very difficult to even imagine we cannot imagine literally krishna's transcendental body is beyond imagination and krishna's transcendental body also has this beautiful feature that it manifests what the devotee wants in the sense <laughs> some of these are very and krishna is having his you know pastimes with his gopis and all that yashoda just doesn't is not able to figure out anything because you know when a boy is at there that age and then you know he'll be expressing some kind of feelings and his expressions in his face uh, you know he might be lying he might be doing this thing and generally parents can catch these things but because of yoga maya yashoda is always attached he's always thinking that krishna is a small boy hmm. so he picks she picks him up keeps some place on his on her lap like that the so yoga maya so transcendental body but it's different and even when all these when krishna enters that uh, arena of kamsa and different people are seeing krishna differently right so krishna's transcendental body and it's also said in goloka krishna has a personal relationship with each devotee we should not worry oh there are millions of devotees there how will krishna reciprocate with me krishna will reciprocate with each of us like he is doing now is reciprocating with each other each of us <clears throat> so there might be some aspects of uh, him that appeals to some devotees some others to some other devotees etc so his transcendental body is uh, beyond imagination and it's not blackish it generally said like a dark cloud mm, but actually it is bluish Uh, it's a bluish color of tamala tree i also told before bluish color of atasi there's a flower called atasi you can search online i have shown this before i think anyway it's always nice to 
fill our eyes with that color. Like this color. Now, nah, and see this, right? So this is the color of Krishna. So just imagine. I mean, the other day I saw some some temples uh, deities photos. Krishna was actually wearing this color dress. And suddenly, uh, one information came to my mind. Actually, Krishna, uh, okay, anyway, I'm like going all over the place, but um, uh, around Radha Kund, Sri Radha Kund, so there are all these kunjas of various Dasta Sakis. Um, so I think it's Rungavidya's kunja, I think. I keep getting confused. Um, so one of the kunjas actually is this color, emerald, blue color, right? And actually, when um, Jatila, Kutila, anybody comes, uh, and what Krishna does is actually when Krishna goes into this, if Krishna wears a blue dress and he goes into this kunja, nobody can recognize him. They can't make out at all that Krishna is there. Because he fully merged into the into the surrounding kunja, which is all of this color. So it's his body color, exactly his body color. <clears throat> so all inconceivable. I mean, it's just we can't we can't really imagine. Mm. Um, so Krishna's Krishna's body is uh, it's amazing. We can't understand it. And his body attracts everyone in the three planetary system, upper, middle, lower. I mean, it is said even in Bhagavatam that Vishnu also gets attracted by Krishna's transcendental body. Hmm. So Krishna's body is especially madhura, sweet. Hmm. Madhura adipatera kilam madhuram. Everything about Krishna is sweet. May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face. So Krishna's lotus face is described. Um, Krishna has a raised chin, you know, like that. Uh, not uh, chin. What is that? The bones uh, near the I don't know what is it called in English. Chin. Huh? No, not chin. Mm. What is that part of the body uh, um, below the eyes? That bones are there, no? What is that called? I don't know. Yeah. Ah, cheek, cheek, cheekbone. So his cheekbone is raised. Like, how do we understand this? Uh, okay. My profile. No, need some close up. Hmm. See, can you see that the cheek part is a little bit raised? Anyway, if you have Radha Madhav's photo in your house, you can see. So it's a little bit raised. So like this, there are so many details about Krishna's uh, uh, transcendental his face lotus like and uh, uh, he is his beautiful smile always smiling yesterday I was telling somebody saying that if you want to be always smiling be in touch with Krishna you will always be smiling just be in touch with Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
then yashoda mata actually dresses krishna with all ornaments because they are like rich you know it's all golden ornaments and of course is yellow dhoti golden ornaments uh, and he wears something uh, some opari something on his upper part of his body and he wears a turban and just imagine he wears a white turban <laughs> and he is a blue body he wears a white turban and he goes in the dust of vrindavan of course the dust of vrindavan is not <laughs> city dust mm, but by the time he comes all that his complete body is covered by dust layer of dust uh, transcendental dust um <clears throat> what was i saying ha uh, huh, so uh, though she d- d- uh, decorates him dresses him with all this rich Uh, paraphernalia. Uh, as soon as Krishna enters, he goes along with his gopas. He enters Vrindavan, and as soon as he enters Vrindavan, his friends uh, put mineral, the gopi dots you call, no, that with minerals, you know, decorates Krishna's face. And like here, it said, covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp. Uh, so there will be paintings on his face, <laughs> like we see, like you know, it's. Uh, it's so beautiful right like see here painting some something or the other painted on krishna's face uh, we can't do all that right but krishna can do anything and he looks so attractive so why am i stressing so much you know people might think why oh, i'm in some like very high class devotee no because see the we should hear these things about krishna and when we hear these things about krishna actually there is not i mean there is no way we cannot be attracted there is no way we cannot be attracted by krishna just because we don't do proper shravanam you know we are having a holding a book in our hand and we are just like okay let me finish this off most of the times we read with this mood so we can never go into the subject matter of any into any subject matter just imagine i mean if we were reading this per per verse and per per verses by this time we would have finished 10 verses but some of these are very very important i mean this bhishma dev is actually helping us set up our mind for giving up this body our mental state to give up this body and of course we are not as qualified as him like i said you know that we will suddenly get into this switch okay krishna mode uh material life mode no right so we have to slowly steadily build this consciousness build this thought process and attraction to krishna is the foundation of course this is not like actually technically technically attraction because that technically technically attraction to krishna means we even forget material duties but at least little by little we are getting you know we are attracted to hear about krishna about krishna's past times that is why you know this first canto is so beautiful actually krishna is not there yet there in the sense uh, krishna's uh, now and past times are coming only in the 10th canto but uh, krishna is all over the place in the first canto after that of course a little bit uh, you know his aishwarya we hear more about his aishwarya and his other avataras and it makes the heart yearn oh when will i again hear about krishna because in the first canto you heard so much then that all those uh, direct hearing about krishna will kind of reduce and then we are you know stuck like mark and day are <laughs> you know this creation destruction then how vishnu is maintaining protecting the devotees we go through all that and say yes 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 okay and krishna is there he will protect me in all situations and uh, then slowly then we'll become more and more attached to krishna by the time we come to the 10th canto and then we have to read 10th canto then 11th beautiful uddhav gita well then what should we do again we should start with first canto and we should keep reading this again and again translation purport translation purport make notes meditate on some of these verses and then krishna consciousness is so beautiful then 
otherwise it becomes very dry if you are doing mechanical bhakti then it's very dry unfortunate but that's i see lot of devotees in that mood. very mechanical and then they say um, yeah we tried but we are not able to make any progress why because no taste no taste why no taste no shravanam simple root cause of all problems is we are not reading proper books one who reads proper books can never get bored can there can never be proper some rights like in bhagavad gita i think he says life of a devotee is adventurous and i was thinking i mean i'm not a very adventurous person so i was thinking um, okay no no i mean whether i want to have all these adventures in life but these adventures are so different these adventures are like material adventures are you are at full risk right but these spiritual adventures are so amazing because krishna is right behind you hmm? so it's so exciting you know every day we move, meet some new devotees every day there's some new krishna conscious challenge to deal with man completely dependent on krishna but all that is possible only when we get attracted to krishna hmm? so these verses are very very beautiful okay prabhupada is saying nowhere in the universe are there such beautiful body pictures as those of the lord krishna okay so i fortunately just expanded on that bhishma deva on his bed of arrows after the battle of kurukshetra is remembering the particular dress of lord krishna which he put as on which he put on as the driver of arjuna's chariot while fighting was going on between arjuna and bhishma bhishma's attraction was drawn mm-hmm. see this is attraction bhishma is fighting on the battlefield and then he is getting attraction is getting drawn by the glittering dress of krishna and indirectly had made his so called enemy because he was not his so called enemy he was his worshipable lord uh, and of course so called enemy arjuna for possessing the lord as his friend he admired he was not envious he admired because he is also his grandson so he admired oh so fortunate so fortunate so we should look at all those great devotees and we should feel oh so beautiful and bhagavatam says actually even just appreciating somebody else's bhakti makes us advance in bhakti it's so bhakti is so powerful simply we appreciate oh we see some great devotees some you know brahmachari swamis and we say oh so nice you know i can i also would want to like serve krishna like that just yeah, just appreciating their bhakti will make us progress in bhakti right so the beach when they just imagine is in the middle of the battlefield and what can we compare this to we are in the middle of turmoil in this material world and still is getting attracted to krishna he doesn't care about that battlefield about he's wanting to having to you know fight or kill arjuna or whatever he's just attracted by the glittering dress of krishna <laughs> Bhishma Dev takes this opportunity to address the Lord as Vijaya Sakhe, friend of Arjuna, because the Lord is pleased when he is addressed conjointly with his devotees who are related with him in different transcendental humors. Either we can be related with the Lord in transcendental humor or we can be related with his Maya Shakti in material humor. And that choice is with us. <laughs> Either we can hear such verses and uh, get completely... uh or run by krishna's beauty right or we can be happy and hold on to material beauty material things material relations uh, it may not be good bad ugly whatever it is right we hold on when we tell devotee saying that okay don't get attracted to material or okay many devotees say yeah i'm not very attracted to material but then they get stuck with when they have problems because they are attracted they don't know that they are attached right to themselves their body their relations etc but of course first stage is not willingly engaging in material sense gratification that itself is the first victory for a devotee when we stop material sense enjoyment right um, again responsibilities these things have to be seen in conjunction so um like i said you know if somebody has to bring somebody else into bhakti you might do things which might not directly seem like giving up same they might seem like material activities of material sense enjoyment but the devotee is renounced so for example you know like i want to bring my daughter into krishna consciousness sometime i take her to a krishna conscious restaurant now if i take her to krishna conscious restaurant it's not like i am 
you know celebrating going to the restaurant because i know that they won't have maintained standard they won't have offered so i just pray to when krishna saying you know i'm just doing this as a service i want to somehow get my daughter into krishna consciousness so uh, i am but i will be as normal happy speaking to her and he'll also think like okay you're also happy coming here i said yeah yeah i'm happy coming here so we should understand that you know sometimes there'll be responsibilities but we don't we we might be doing certain activities which might look like sense gratification but it's our internal mood that matters for pulling somebody into krishna consciousness we should do this this is preaching please remember this please remember raghunath das goswami right the instruction shri chaitanya mahaprabhu gave to him saying that externally just be like a karmi internally don't divert your attention from krishna it is difficult but slowly steadily we can practice that okay 1934 ಯುಧೀತುರಗರಜೋ ವಿಧೂಂ ರವಿಶ್ವಕ್ ಕಚಲುಲಿತ ಶಮ ವಾರ್ ಅಲಂಕೃತ ಮಮ ನಿಶಿತ ಶರೈರ್ ವಿಭಿದ್ಯಮಾನ ತ್ವಚಿ ವಿರಸತ್ ಕವಚೇಸ್ತು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆತ್ಮ ಆನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಶಿಪ್ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಹೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಿ ಫಿಲ್ so much attracted bhishma devis flowing hair of lord krishna turned ashen due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses and because of his labor beads of sweat wetted his face all these decorations intensified by the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows were enjoyed by him let my mind thus go unto shri krishna so this is the most important thing let my mind go unto shri krishna however however you have to just meditate on this always my mind has to get attracted go to krishna means let me mind get attracted to krishna and bhishma devi is remember various aspects of you know his uh, association with krishna his interaction with krishna his contact with krishna and he is remembering that saying let my mind remember this Mm. the flowing hair of lord krishna now krishna's hair is beautiful black curly and it became ashen due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses and just imagine bhishma dev is in the middle of this you know great battle and he is you know he is describing or his his attention is going to the beautiful hair of krishna his attention is going to you know there are beads of sweat wetted his face know how far you know this might be and bishma dev is so intently looking at krishna he is saying oh there is beads of perspiration on krishna's face oh his hair has become you know covered by dust and bishma dev is saying all these are decorations these because his body is not material so he does all these things yoga maya does because it's just decorations and it beautifies krishna and all these decorations intensified by the wounds so there are visibly externally there were wounds dealt by my sharp arrows that bhishma dev's arrows had created wounds in the body of krishna but all these were enjoyed by krishna because it's all krishna's pastimes that he enjoys with his devotees let my mind thus go on to shri krishna so he's remembering this form so in his form you know this beautiful form of krishna his hair you know covered by dust sweat on his face wounds on his body and he's just remembering that form oh let my mind get stuck in this form hmm. <clears throat> that is why this uh for for neophytes for most of us you know dt worship is recommended of course dt worship one should do once when somebody comes to the stage of brahman initiation not otherwise but we can get attracted to the dt dt form like look at the dt form you know when we for example i mean i keep giving this example of mayapur because i just so dear to me right and when you stand every every time i go i'll be the first person i'm so tall and i feel so disgusted like standing there and blocking so many people view but i feel no anyway krishna is much taller people can see and i stand right in front 
right? Because that form of Krishna has to just, you know, get imprinted in our mind because we're there, we are there for what, two, three days and then we come back. And then we, you know, and it's just that form that is there with us till we again go back to Mayapur. Right? So we should, so if we close our eyes, if you just think about, oh, Radha Madhav, just that beautiful form should come. So that's why it's always advisable in your homes. Have big photos, big framed photos. I mean, we've done this in our house, you know, everywhere, big, big photos. There's one beautiful, big photo of Radha Madhav. And he always, you know, just sit and just remember the form. How Krishna is smiling, how Krishna is standing in his Tribhangi form, how Krishna is blowing his flute. Mm-hmm. Krishna's beautiful decoration, dressing. And we have to, we have to, our minds should get attracted by this. Otherwise, minds will get attracted to material beauty, material pleasure, material relations, you know, children, these, that, all of them which are going to just bind us. Uh, and this is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. It can just steal our hearts and minds and our, you know, attention. But requires Tivra Bhakti. I mean, all this... Whatever I'm saying can be achieved only when we perform Tivra Bhakti. Tivra Bhakti means two things. One is intensity. The other is Anyabhilashita, Shuddha Bhakti. You know, I know of many devotees who cannot understand this intensity business. They say, um, many devotees come and tell me, saying, or at least I've heard of them telling to other devotees who are inspired by His Holiness Bhakti Vikas Maharaj, saying that, oh, Maharaj is very strict. Why you want to get appreciated from him? I like this, you know, I've heard people telling. I, I, feel, I feel like, you know, unfortunately, devotees don't understand this strictness, this intensity. You know, it takes us to platforms which many, unfortunately, cannot even imagine. That strictness, that intensity, it creates so much of rasa at the end that, you know, others will be wanting, others will be stuck with little bit material rasa here and there. Why? Because they're not so intense in their bhakti. But when we do bhakti like this intensely and when we make progress, we get drowned in that rasa and then there's nothing that can touch us. Right? But devotees can't understand this. You know, it's very simple, right? Like, uh, if, if suppose there's some health problem or something, you go through so many treatment and this and that and all that, it'll be, there'll be pain, but why initially, eventually there'll be, you will get relief. But somebody says, no, 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 I don't want all this pain. Okay, you take some of the treatment which is not really powerful enough to cure the disease. So then that disease will linger, linger, linger for many years. Instead of that, you know, go through intense treatment and then within few months, years, just get out of the problem. So that intense bhakti is this process and Actually, Prabhupada gave this only. Uh, today, devotees are not wanting to do it and they are having their own reasons to just not engage in intense bhakti. And only when we do intense bhakti, we can actually, you know, really appreciate these things. Otherwise, we'll, how, how can we, I mean, at least I don't know. I, I don't know how it works on the other side because for, for me, from the day I started reading Prabhupada's books, it was just intensity, intensity, intensity from start to end. Right, Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita writes, you know, be like, you know, like military discipline. I mean, when I read that, I got like completely shocked. I mean, what does this mean? I mean, we come to Krishna, we come to, you know, uh, uh, do things, happy, be happy. And Prabhupada is saying military discipline. And military discipline, uh, when you think of military discipline, we don't seem to see any happiness there. As in, it's like strict and this and that. But then, you know, I was meditating on that, meditating on that. And then, uh, then I came in touch with, you know, my Guru Mahal. Then I looked at him and said, he's also like this. Intensity, intensity, intensity. And I said, okay, this is what it is. Then, you know, I tried to put that in practice in my life. And I can see that it's amazing. It's so beautiful. You know, when we can move to the next levels of bhakti. Uh, and just imagine, uh, you know, how it will be when we move still further. These things will become a reality. We can actually see Krishna. And so we should not get attracted to doing lukewarm bhakti. Uh, one of my, uh, you know, 
Shiksha Guru's uh, his grace with one Gorang Prabhu. He's he's a disciple of his own in the Patak Maharaj and he stays in uh, Sri Dham Mayapur. And so he went uh, sometime back when he had come to Bangalore, he looked at all the devotees here in Bangalore that they were doing bhakti and he said, you guys are all doing time pass bhakti. You know, and the, just that those words just hit me like crazy. He said, Prabhu is saying we are doing time pass bhakti. So then what should be real bhakti? Then I realized, see, real devotees are doing real bhakti. And that is given in the pages of Prabhupada. So we should read these purports. That's why I you know, keep hammering this point, saying, read Prabhupada's purports, read Prabhupada's purports. See, sometimes when we hear from others, you no, know, it will not have the same impact as when we read. And it can work both ways. You know, sometimes hearing also might have the same effect. But reading is so powerful. It's a personal experience. It's a personal interaction with Srila Prabhupada. Because whatever he is writing here, be it translation, be it purport, is just Prabhupada speaking to us. You know, sometimes you say, no, no, it's actually Krishna or some devotee is speaking, speaking the verse. No, but the translation, the way Prabhupada wants us to understand this verse, he is translated that way. Because many a times you'll see word to word, meaning will be different, translation will be different. Because Prabhupada wants us to understand and get into this mood. So please read Prabhupada's books. Please read Prabhupada's books. Sri Bhishma Dev is a great devotee of the Lord in relationship of servitorship. So he is Seva, Seva, Dasya, Dasya Bhav. Thus his throwing of sharp arrows at the transcendental body of the Lord is as good as the worship of another devotee who throws soft roses upon him. So it's not different. We should not think about Bhishma Dev and say, bad, this is not good. How can somebody... Fire arrows at Krishna. No, it's his service. Bhishma Dev's piercing of the body of Lord Krishna is a sort of bewildering problem for the non-devotee atheist. But those who are devotees or liberated souls are not bewildered. Hmm. Bhishma Dev appreciated all the all merciful attitudes of the Lord because he did not leave Arjuna alone, although he was disturbed by the sharpened arrows of Bhishma Dev. Nor was he reluctant to come before Bhishma's deathbed, even though he was ill-treated by Bhishma on the battlefield. Bhishma's repentance and the Lord's merciful attitude are both unique. So beautiful, see? The Lord's merciful attitude and Bhishma Dev's repentance. Oh, repentance. Oh, why did I have to do it? But then he knows that it is for it's Krishna's will. Okay, now next paragraph might be just overhead transmission for us, okay? So don't worry. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur path is like this. We have to come to very high spiritual maturity to appreciate this. But I'm putting here, these years, because we have to also open ourselves up to what our achas are, acharyas are speaking. Pila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, a great acharya and devotee in the humor of conjugal love. So he's, he's in the mood of Madhuri Rasa. Right, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. He remarks very saliently in this regard. Now, the salient might not be very appreciative to many of us who are stuck with the Dharma platform. He says that the wounds created on the body of the Lord by the sharpened arrows of Bhishma Dev were as pleasing to the Lord as the biting of a fiancé who bites the Lord's body directed by strong sense of sex desire. Now, when we hear this, we just, you know, very dirty picture comes to our mind of material lust. Right? But we should always remember this material lust is a perverted reflection of the spiritual love. There's no lust in the spiritual world. It's love. Hmm. So this is a perverted reflection. So we should not look at this statement and just bring up a material picture in our mind. So, and we should also understand that these, this kind of Leela exists in the spiritual world. So it should again not shock us. Of course, it will take us years to come to understanding of this. Okay. And don't get disturbed by this. Okay. Just understand that it exists. Such biting by the opposite sex is never taken as a sign of enmity, even if there's a wound on the body. <clears throat> so, Madhurya Rasa, why am I 
he is saying this this madhurya rasa is so difficult to understand you know if you are materially if you have material consciousness we will just look at everything krishna is doing saying with material thought process and then krishna then we become question mark oh krishna is doing all these kind of things which we can't i mean this is also low low class even in in the material platform yeah so don't look at krishna's past times with a material view point for which we have to purify ourselves and for us to purify ourselves we have to do intense bhakti the lord enjoyed the wounds created by his great devotee bishma dev and because bishma dev is a devotee in the chivalrous relation uh, uh, he fixes up his mind on krishna in that in that wounded condition okay so i'll stop here if anybody has any questions you can can discuss any questions are you all there yes okay okay any questions any thoughts anything coming to your mind or it's just through that uh, intensity we were discussing right that we should mm. meet with the intensity <laughs> this mm. is basically on the intensity of our our own uh, endeavors right mm. because the intensity of actual devotional service might be dependent on the mercy of the lord also right mm-hmm. well both right damodar leela always remember damodar leela mm-hmm. intensity results in mercy not the other way around when we do intense bhakti krishna will bestow mercy the krishna is not those kind who wants to hold back his mercy he is ready to give his mercy in fact his mercy is already there it's just a recipient how can we receive that mercy is when we when we do with intensity we will receive that mercy and what is mercy and this is also commonly misunderstood topic what is mercy what does mercy mean what does getting mercy of krishna mean no devotees come to you know i've seen so many they come to maharaj and then say please give your mercy and then i've seen my guru maharaj answering this what does mercy mean mercy means following the instructions mm. when we follow instructions of guru and krishna automatically mercy comes automatic it's like a button it just flows mercy will flow but to follow those instructions if we don't if we are not intense in our sadhana in our outlook towards our life what is the goal of our life how important are material things how much am i attract so if there is no intensity in these things then that switch will not open right because we are not doing enough to get the mercy you know you can think about that like that switch has a threshold right when it crosses certain threshold automatically there will be a flurry flood of mercy but we have to reach that intensity no right. if you are only walking at 10 km speed no use maybe you have to run at 40 km speed only then something will happen so which is why that intensity and how does intensity come only when we are in the association of devotees please understand this this intensity will not come of course there are there will be some very fortunate devotees like all these great gurus and all that for them they are the ones who are giving this to others right so for them really it's just you know because they're all eternal associates so it's there with them but for us we need to be in touch with those devotees who have this intensity and intense intensity means 24 hours thinking about krishna consciousness like i said it requires lot of smartness not thinking krishna consciousness in such a way that i push all my family away and you know become like some rebel in the house not like that very intelligent raghunath das goes from me please remember raghunath das goes from krishna consciousness is requires that is why it is buddhi yogam 
means buddhi yogam it has to intelligence has to be used and krishna says dadami buddhi yogam i will give you the intelligence right but it has to be krishna conscious matters on our head not material things yeah right and that intensity has to be there all the time how can i serve krishna more how can i get this devotee into bhakti how can i make progress how can i surrender myself more how can i follow the instructions of guru that is intensity not how can i get my promotion okay this next me week this meeting is there what shall i do i mean this is not going to help us that is there okay i mean okay meeting is there okay important meeting okay fine half a day i'll give or half a day or half an hour i'll spend based on whatever is the requirement but that's it that cannot take up my my consciousness and these things we can only learn when we are in the association of devotees and i've been you know harping on this saying that don't do devotion by yourself at home don't do devotion alone we will not be able to make progress it's my personal experience you know so oh, we have to be in the middle of like minded devotees do devotion then we will make progress and then other devotees will come to us they'll get influenced by us then they will do you know it's like how chaitanya mahaprabhu spread krishna consciousness in the south hmm. he goes to one village or one villager comes he uh, uh, embraces him gives him prema and then that devotee goes right then he goes and then he was his whole village becomes krishna conscious you know steeped in love of krishna it's like that krishna consciousness and that influence cannot be experienced on <laughs> online and so it has to be in the physical association of devotees there's nothing like online bhakti now we can't feed krishna online right so please find time please find time it's a humble request please find time to be in connection do bhakti at least once in a week because we're all so busy maybe more than once in a week is not possible but once in a week uh, you have to be in the association of course it has to be like minded devotees this is another challenge many times devotees face but those who are fortunate to get that like minded association make full advantage of it take full advantage of it okay <laughs> anything else okay so today's the bhakti bhakti vinod thakur stiro bhav so half a day fasting i'm sure you would have already known but since i'm anyway in the middle of a class i'm telling you still not had breakfast and you had not thought about this just another 3 hours you can fast that's all by 12 o'clock then you can have okay okay if there's nothing else i'll stop here श्रीमद भागवत की जय जगत गुरु श्री प्रभुपाद की जय वन चकल पत्र कृपा सिंह देव चकती तान भावने हरे कृष्ण प्रणाम प्रभु जी यू जस्ट लाइक अनाउंस अबाउट द क्लास लाइक वील हैव इट टुमारो या ओके सो मंडे इज नॉट वर्किंग आउट दिस ओनली आई मीन आई आई डोंट नो लाइक डिवोटीज आर जॉइनिंग सम टाइम्स लेट सम डिवोटीज आर नॉट इवन जॉइनिंग So I don't know. Maybe you know. Sometimes I keep thinking, are these really sessions useful to anybody or not? But anyway, I'll continue my service. So give me some time. Actually, Ruchira um, Mataji, I spoke to you. Then I remembered. Actually, I had uh, uh, given that slot to some one more group. Some there's some Telugu association. So they are going to come back this week. Whether they are uh, what I had given two slots to them Saturday afternoon and Saturday morning. So. and that was before so i have to wait for them to revert and then i can uh, decide so sun uh, monday evening is anyway not working because you know half an hour slot number 1 number 2 devotees are tired after their work many people are not attending uh, you know and that doesn't help right because continuity has to be there etc so this week i will possibly take a call tomorrow's class won't be there so if at all it will be saturday sunday is what i want to do and preferably saturday morning sunday morning so i will communicate in the group this week but 
uh, monday evening class will not be there i'm just not i mean i myself i'm not getting that same intensity uh, because uh, you know it's maybe different i don't know right for me sunday mornings are working better for bhagavatam so uh, i'll let you know during the course of this week uh, whether we can do saturday morning or something else but yeah monday evening at least i would not want to continue okay bro 